All right. Hey, everyone. Bill Gallagher of Thraven U here for another great legacy stream. Um, just sort of as a reminder, mostly for the YouTube folks who aren't always here for all the videos and whatnot. Um, I am on a podcast now. I'm on the Eternal Glory podcast. We're going to be recording again tomorrow, and we're going to be going and talking about a lot of the recent legacy online events and some of the emerging deck lists. So if that's something you're interested in, um, that episode will probably be dropping about Friday morning. So as far as today's actual deck list goes, we are going to be playing White Eldrazi. And I say White Eldrazi, but we actually have a couple of splash cards in here um, to try and increase the consistency of the deck and or sort of fix some holes in matchups. So if you're not familiar with the White Eldrazi archetype, the general idea is that you're taking the most powerful of the Eldrazi cards, Thought Not Seer and Reality Smasher, and you're combining them with sort of a Hate Bears shell. So you have both Thalia's, Thought Not Seer and Reality Smasher, as kind of this curve. Because you can theoretically go like turn one Thalia, turn two Thalia, turn three Thought Not Seer, turn four Reality Smasher, and just have this absolutely cripplingly powerful opener. You lose out on some ability to cast the Thought Nuts here on turn two by doing this. So we have Ancient Tombs, Eldarazi Temples, and just one city of traders in order to go and do all of this. But um, there's not things like Eye of Ugans and the full playset of city of traders here to power this out as consistently as possible. Hey, Reaple Cheap, welcome, um, and congrats on your 5 0 with curses. Um, I do want to show that off because it's, uh, it's super cool. Let me find that screenshot. I know I tweeted it out. <coughs> so Reaple Cheap sent me this screenshot earlier. Um, he was trying Dream Stealer in the sideboard of Curses, uh, and he got a an absolutely disgusting four for one uh, with it, um, and that was super cool. Uh, so if you're interested in uh, checking out that out, it's Reeple Cheap on Twitter. R e e p l c h e e p. Okay, so going back to the deck list here, um, you're looking to play an early Thalia, Chalice, or more other Thalia to sort of initially disrupt your opponent and then finish with Thought Not Seer and Reality Smasher. Palace Jailer is sort of your backup plan, where in some matchups, like, you stick one of these on turn two and you just, like, drown your opponents in card advantage. Hey, Jerry, welcome. Hope things are going well for you. <coughs> So, before we talk about the sideboard, let's talk about why this deck doesn't see as much play as you might expect. So, despite the fact that this is effectively a one-color deck, its mana base is very, 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 very bad. Um, and this is often surprising to people who play this deck for the first time. But there's real tension between the colorless sources that accelerate out the Eldrazi, the white-white you need for something like Palace Jailer, the true white that you need for sideboard cards like Deafening Silence, Swords of Fire Shares, Disenchant, Rest in Peace. So if you, if you look at the mana base here, Cavern of Souls is one of the primary ways that you're going to go and get white mana, but that doesn't cast Rest in Peace, Disenchant, all, all these cards in this column here, as well as Pontiff. So you're really trying to push your mana base to the absolute limits, and you don't have that many cards that cast some of your sideboard cards, um, which puts you into a pretty rough position a lot of times. Once Upon a Time is supposed to help and improve the consistency of this shell, um, which is, I think, why they're trying it out. And so we have Mox Diamond, as well as a handful of lands to cast our true white cards. Um, we are probably going to stumble over ourselves a little bit during this league, but for the games that we do where we want, sorry, where we do what we want, uh, this is incredibly powerful. Um, this deck list is brought to you by Kevin B. I very much appreciate the donation, and this is a deck that I enjoy a lot. I don't play a lot of vintage these days, um, borderline none, uh, especially now that I'm locked in the house, but when I did, I really enjoyed playing with Hate Bears, and uh, this is very much sort of in the spirit of some of the vintage hate bear decks. 
Um, just saying a few brief words about the sideboard. It may look a little weird to be playing Source of Plowshares in your Chalice of the Void deck, but a lot of times the Chalices are going to come out in spots where these Source of Plowshares come in, so it's not necessarily as bad as it looks. The Orzhov Pontiff is perhaps a little bit ambitious as far as the mana base goes, because it requires you to have two colored mana, one of which you don't actually produce unless you have Mox Diamond or Cavernous Souls. So we'll see if this works out. Um, oftentimes in these spots you'll see something like Holy Light instead. Um, when Young Pyromancer was running around a whole bunch, that was my go-to answer for the like go-wide token-based strategies. Uh, Shoot, thank you very much for subscribing. I really appreciate your support, friend. Um, so I'm going to talk about this more when we actually hit the goal, but... As of right now, I'm sort of like mentally working out a plan to have sort of a sub-focused legacy brewing thing where I'm going to work together with the subs and we're going to try to brew a, a new legacy deck. Like from scratch, we're going to try to come up with a, a new archetype. Um, and it's probably going to take a lot of work and we might make something that's an absolute disaster, but I thought that would be a really fun sub-goal. All right, let's do it. Let's hop into a league. Um, I've had a lot of fun helping... How do I say this? Helping Tier 2 and Tier 3 Legacy decks become a little bit more refined. That's way too loud for me. Um, so, like, I've really enjoyed working with things like Dino Stompy and Curses over the past six months or so, and, like, trying to tune those decks, make them a little bit more competitive. And I've been really happy with the results of doing that. And so I thought it would be really cool to put together something where, like, we try to do that again with the subs. What a beautiful hand. Mm. 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 This hand is so good. Turn 1 Chalice, turn 2 Thalia, turn 3 Thought Not Seer. Let's go. Evening, Innistrad Revenue Service. I hope all is well. I've been having a lot of fun with Legacy as of right now. Um, done a few tutoring sessions recently. Oh, uh, well. That looks embarrassing now. And the amount of life loss I'm going to take off this Ancient Tomb is also going to be pretty rough. We really wanted to be playing against a blue deck with this hand. That's okay. <coughs> I think playing this Thalia this turn is still correct. It's possible that I'm supposed to wait until turn four to play that Thalia, so that I can play it off, like, Caracas Plains or something like that. But if my opponent doesn't play a creature this turn, I really want to have this Thalia to block the Eldrazi Mimic, because it, like, saves me the life that the Ancient Tomb would have taken. What is a white-green Eldrazi? Well, all our Eldrazi are colorless. The white comes in the form of the Hate Bears, and the green comes in the form of Once Upon a Time. All right, um, Palace Jailer would be pretty hot. Too many colors, you say. That's, that's fair. Um, the White Eldrazi deck definitely has pushed the mana base about as far as you can push the mana base for a Stompy deck. Yeah, this hand went from being, like, the god hand against most matchups in Legacy to being, like, absolutely terrible. Another idea I had was stream where you play death and taxes and challenge subs to playing their brews, satisfy both demographics. That's a great idea. Um, that's something that I haven't um, explored before. It's actually a really good idea. I'm gonna... I'm going to write that one down. <coughs> uh, 
<laughs> yikes has been called. I, I feel like that's a fine spot for a yikes. Gonna, I'm gonna be honest with you, chat. I like never expected to lose this game in a billion years. Like my hand was so good. Well, I think this is probably the safest. It doesn't pad my life total the most, but it potentially saves me a lot of life some ways down the road. I need my opponent to have just three lands in hand. <laughs> That's not a land. Please don't be walking, Ballista. I have a family. Hello, friend! What do you do? <coughs> what do you do? Hmm. You're gonna do things. You're, you're gonna do things. Alright, assuming I can survive for a little while, Eldrazi Displacer might get me out of this jam. <clears throat> okay, how am I doing this turn? I can just block Matter Reshaper with Thalia, take four, go to one, and then have active Del Eldrazi Displacer and plenty of mana to use it, it for future threats, but it means my Ancient Tomb is no longer a land, which is probably fine. Otherwise, I can trade Eldrazi Displacer for either Thought Knot or Matter Reshaper. I can block Thalia and Eldrazi Displacer on Thought Knots here, and then bounce Thalia. I get a card out of that. So it's a question of, like, do I want to be able to displace one or more creatures for the rest of the game, or do I want to card off of this slot knots here? That's actually very tough. Because Eldrazi Displacer is kind of a combo with thought knots here. Uh, Reaple Cheap, thank you very much for uh, gifting a sub to Innistrad Revenue Service. Uh, very much appreciate it. Let me update that real quick. I think I'm going to take this Thought Knots here off the table. This is a, this is a really tough decision. But I think I need to play towards Palace Jailer stabilizing the board. And yikes. That's a very bad draw. <coughs> and I don't think I can tap out for like a Palace Jailer if I'm also holding up Eldrazi Displacer mana. Oh, I'm responding. You're not killing me. Ha! Day is mine, healthy 44. Alright, um, so what do we have for Eldrazi? Source of Plowshare is obviously very good. We'll probably bring in Containment Priest as a combo with Eldrazi Displacer to permanently exile opponents' things. And we can think about these six cards, but they're going to be kind of medium. 
So the, the starting point here is boarding in these four for the Chalice of the Void. The Chalice of the Void is very, very bad here. And then after that, it's the question of, like, are these cards better than things that already exist in the main deck? Uh, Reaple Cheap, I will 100% I will keep that in mind for the future. Um, and I, I will promise you that, like, the Phil versus Jank stream thing is going to happen at some point in the not-too-distant future. <coughs> Bourbon Spectre is sweet. I think I'm just gonna whack Submit. Like, the Thalias are kinda medium, but they have First Strike, and I can bounce them with Caracas. I have three copies of Caracas, and Thalia plus other Thalia makes a pretty darn good First Strike wall. Milosis, thank you very much for following. I hope you're enjoying the content here. I think clues are sweet. Um, I have a lot of fun playing with Tireless Tracker. I'm just going to play Caracas and pass the turn so that I can source the Plowshares and Eldrazi Mimic if my opponent plays one on turn one. It's a little punishing if they just wasteland me. <clears throat> Boy, I know how to call him. This is a really weird spot as far as what land I'm going to play. As they follow up with another wasteland, losing this ancient tomb hurts. Fuck me, god damn! <clears throat> Alright. Your move, Yugi boy. What do you have for me? That's fine. This is a tricky spot. I'm not going to cast a source of plowshares. I'm going to try to brick wall it and list one with my Thalia. Opponent playing a Thought Not Sierra or Reality Smasher here is super spooky. I'm more scared of Thought Nuts here. Yeah. So that'll take my Source to Plowshares, and then I have no castable cards. Uh, Milosis, a lot of people are in the same boat as you, where they've either started working from home already or are in the transition period. Um, and it's going, I think, oh, awesome. Super happy about that. I think it's going better than a lot of people expected. So, like, for example, I, I'm a teacher, right? And I'm probably on the younger end of teachers as far as, like, the average goes. And if all of my coworkers can adapt to, like, Google Classroom and such, most of your peers will probably be fine um, during the transition. Alright, um, would love, 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 love to spike a land here. Well, that's not a land, but it's a pretty good draw. We're just going to be kind of holding our horses here. Don't do it again. F. 
I am really only missing lands to make this hand pop, though. Like, a soul land means that I can, like, Palace Jailer into Thought Nuts here, or vice versa. If my opponent didn't take Bethalia Heretic Cathar there, I would be looking at some very scary things. Uh, but for now, life's pretty bad, and I'm going to get whacked by this Thought Knots here a couple times. Um, Cardboard Live is active for me. So, Innistrad Revenue Service, maybe you want to refresh? So the once upon a time is not castable here because A, we don't have green mana, and B, because we don't have three mana. I think I'm dead. I think this is like officially the point where I don't come back because I've missed land drops. Yep, okay. Yeah. The U.S. is kind of bungling its response as a whole, in my opinion. I think people at the local level are doing the best they can. But there's it's been some interesting things afoot. <coughs> An arrest warrant went out for a pastor today who had like a 1,000 person plus church service despite uh, there being like a lockdown in I think it was like Florida or something like that. So, you know, we're doing good work here. Uh, my list is, I'm, I'm happy to hear that, you know, even though things are going poorly for you, you still have at least something to help support you. If you have IT skills, you are, uh, you are not going to be jobless in this time. I can pretty much guarantee you that. Yeah, I, I think things are much rougher in the large cities as of right now. Like, I was talking with Bryant Cook last week or two weeks ago on one of his podcasts, and he was, you know, talking about how crazy some of the stores were as people were stocking up. And, uh, like, I live, relatively speaking, out in the boonies. So there's relatively low population density here. There's a lot of people who, like, don't have neighbors. Like, it's the sort of place where not all of our kids even have internet connections because, like, that's how far out in the country we are. So there are very, very, very few reported cases around here. And we're mostly just playing cautiously um, with a lot of the decisions we're making. I mean, I'm, I'm like 10 minutes from a Walmart. <coughs> um, our hand's pretty good. Um, our opponent is likely to be playing something like DNT Maverick, Loam, or something like that. So the Chalice of the Void in my hand is like maybe not going to be ideal. But... Um, Walking Ballista as early removal into Thought Nuts here or Palace Jailer. Like, one of those two cards is probably going to be pretty darn good. Oh, this is a really interesting spot. Really, really, really interesting spot. So I, I get to play towards one of Palace Jailer or Thought Nuts here on turn three, and I'm going to have to pick which one it is. I think it's correct to Chalice on zero here, uh, assuming that my opponent is indeed playing 
four to five color loam. Let's not let them get another Mox Diamond. And then I'm going to play a Walking Ballista for X equals one. This is going to be specifically so that my opponent cannot play Dark Confidant next turn and have it live. I'm pretty happy about that draw. <clears throat> also very happy that my opponent just didn't like slam turn to Oko. Alright, um, now this is where things are interesting. So I have either Thoughts here or Thalia this turn. <coughs> what does my opponent have? It could be holding up Abrupt Decay. It could be... Doesn't seem like they have Knight. They would have just played that. It doesn't seem like they have Oko. They would have just played that. They don't have a Liliana. They would have played that. They don't have an Uro. They would have played that. I don't think this Thought Notes here is going to be very good. Like, the Thought Notes here is going to play around Decay and potentially take Decay to protect Athalia next turn, or, like, force a Decay on a Ballista. No, I think my opponent's on Loam. I think this is going to be a pretty bad Thought Notes here. Oh! I will eat Crow. <laughs> so, the opponent is on a Primeval Titan ramp deck, um, like those that are doing well in the online challenges. Uh, it's more that Suppression Field doesn't kill your opponent's Reaple Cheap. All the hate in this deck outside of Chalice is just connected to creatures. And that's part of the strength of this. So this deck can't super afford too many hate cards that aren't bodies. Um, I have a little bit of dropped frames tonight on my end, so that might partially be me. Um, it's very unusual for me to have dropped frames, so I'm not exactly sure what's up. Okay. Um, so Source of Plowshares is going to be good, Chalice of the Void is going to be bad. I don't really have much for this matchup. When I'm on the play, I can consider Chalice for Chalice on Zero for Max Diamond, but there's only four of those. I guess Containment Priest is good for Green Sun. I'm letting all the internet out through the window. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Wait. My window's closed. I don't know where the internet is getting out. Be going out through the, the vents or something. Yeah, Leon and Arbiter would be fine, but if you take a look at the threats here, um, Thalia, Thalia, Jailer, Containment Priest, Pontiff are all humans, and that helps with your Cavern of Souls. Yo, this hand is pretty sweet. Keep this. <clears throat> ah, well, you're basically an expert then. Um, I think I'm going to hold up Source of Plowshares rather than play out Eldrazi Templar Ancient Tomb here. The only thing that this stops me from doing is casting a top deck Thought Not Seer next turn. Oh, we're getting him. We're getting him. 
Get out of here. That's really not what I wanted to draw. I'll play Ancient Tomb this turn. Um, over Eldrazi Temple, because I want to be able to... Fuck. Yes. Because I want to be able to Palace Jailer this exact card. <clears throat> uh, I still believe it is correct to Palace Jailer that card rather than play Reality Smasher this turn. I'm going to think about it for a second, though. Yeah, Mazabeth makes playing the Smasher very awkward. Yeah, if you look at, like, what percentage of, like, blue-green decks play Oko, it's a very large percentage. Um, I think I'm going to hold the Mox Diamond for a turn rather than play it out. The only reason to play out Mox Diamond there is to play towards... Oh, that's terrifying with the Field of the Dead there. Okay, no second land, so opponent is out of lands in hand. <coughs> Sorry, to finish my thought, the only reason to play out Box Diamond on the previous turn is to play towards a top-decked Swords of Plowshares off the Monarch Trigger. So with Eldrazi Temple, I have 2, 4, 5, 6, 7 mana, so I can't Smasher and Thalia. I need to commit at least one more body to the table, and I think I probably need to Wasteland that Field of the Dead. The Field of the Dead is really problematic as this game goes on. It's awkward if my opponent plays Ramonap Excavator, but... Like, Ramunap plus Misty Rainforest is already, like, really, really, really good. And I don't think I'm in the position yet to just Wasteland the Maze of Ith and start trying to aggro out my opponent. That's a, that's a little tricky. Yeah, I think I'm going to be holding down the fort here. So, due to Wasteland Recursion, I'm going to fetch out another Plains. Eldrazi Displacer is probably the draw that just, like, disgustingly rips this game open. Fuck. No, I'm in other planes. Alright, that was a mistake. So this is the defensive Reality Smasher that's just going to hang back and make sure I don't lose the Monarch. Um, I'm going to work together with subs to try and brew a new Legacy deck from scratch. Eh, that's bad. You remember last turn where I talked about how I was going to Wasteland the Field of the Dead so that, like, game didn't get carried away, and then I didn't Wasteland the Field of the Dead? 
That was super relevant. Um, uh, dead? Feels like I'm dead. <coughs> So, when I did all my mental math, I forgot that Dryad turned Maze of Ith into a mana-producing land. So I was thinking that, like, my opponent couldn't primetime me this turn, and I was very wrong. Alright, uh, let's, uh, let's throw in the towel there. If my opponent had the prime time, I think I'm pretty dead that game regardless, though. Like, Palace Jailer's gonna draw me some more cards, but, like, the Primeval Titan hitting play is pretty darn rough for me. Oh, yeah, the opposing deck is super, super cool. I like it a lot. So there's this other awkward thing in that, like, Sorcerer Spyglass on Wasteland is really good for me, but also pretty sketch in that, like, my own Wastelands are one of the ways that I keep my opponent from getting to Primeval Titan mana. So uh, there's that. <coughs> Yeah, Reeple Chief, I'm really, uh, really happy with the work that I put in on Curses. And, uh, again, congrats on your, your 5-0. That, that list looked sweet. Um, I did a tutoring session with someone this weekend where I was helping them work through some similar things with a 12-post build. Um, and that was really satisfying as well. So, the Dryad of the Elysian Grove is an enchantment, right? Yeah. Maybe I'm supposed to bring in these disenchants as just another way to answer that, or as a way to blow up their Noxon. Like, the Revoker would hit a Mox in most cases. And, like, I'm playing Mox as well. I think Disenchant is better than Revoker. Like, the Disenchant is obviously harder on the mana, and it's not a potential turn one threat, but Revoker as a 2 1 isn't necessarily awesome here. Oh, God. All right. All right. You all seen that Leroy Jenkins video? It was real popular a while back. This is a Leroy Jenkins hand. Where we just yell, let's do this, and we'll cast Thalia on turn one and see if it's good enough. It is not good enough. I accept my fate. Leroy Dragons. The dream is that my opponent casts a green sun on turn two, and I guess a containment priest to that as well. Leroy is a, a Hearthstone card now. Nice. Neat did not expect that. Ha ha! If you didn't like that, then boy do I have something for you.
Uh, it, it's going to really depend on what land it is. <clears throat> okay, that's a really good draw for a touch down the line. <coughs> Like, Thought Not Seer is, like, the exact follow-up card we want to have for this matchup, because taking out the Primeval Titan from their hand is so good. Boo! Shit. The little containment priest that could. <laughs> I knew what I was doing in keeping this hand. I have no regrets. Fuck! Do I attack? I feel like I attack. Oh. Are they are they blocking? This is really weird. No fear has been called? Okay. I can respect that. <coughs> we win by reducing our opponent's life total to zero. Stopping to do that. Stopping doing that would be a mistake, right? Uh... <laughs> Yikes. So whoever was talking about like the question of do we play out a future Mox Diamond if we draw a land, I'm going to say that the answer is now no. Priest stops Green Sun and also allows us to Eldrazi Displacer away things. Not attacking goes against the spirit of the deck. Yeah, that's fair. So the kind of scary thing now is if our opponent just goes, like, land into, like, X4 creature. Oh, God. Ramunap Excavator Wasteland. Big yikes. Mox plays around Wasteland. That's a that's a mighty fine point you have there. Ugh. All right, so we need to draw planes into planes into, oh god, oh god. All right, well, we tried, GG's. I do think turn one Thalia on the play with this deck is very strong and a reason to 100% keep that hand. Uh, it did not pan out for us. The collector oof was rough and we didn't hit a land. We're playing a lot of lands. So we had 24 hits in the deck for a land. Which is pretty good, especially after like a few turns have gone by. Yeah. 
I'm gonna keep this. And I don't think I'm casting the Once Upon a Time on my turn. I'm gonna wait a little while for that. <coughs> we have very few hits with Once Upon a Time that would like actually change what I'm doing on my turn one. Especially if I have no information from about like what my opponent is doing. Uh, that was a really silly match. Um, I had two Mox Diamonds in my hand, which made it even sillier. Okay, two Chancellor of the Annex triggers. That's interesting. So I have to decide how I'm playing out this entire game this turn now. I can once upon a time and use City of Traders to pay for once upon a time to actually do the effect. But I think the way that I'm playing this is casting once upon a time, using it to break the Chancellor triggers, and then casting Phyrexian Revoker naming Grizzlebrand. Take that as my turn one play, take Thalia as my turn two play, and then plan on playing the Thought Knots here later in the game. Otherwise, I can cast Once Upon a Time, break the triggers, cast Thalia on turn two uncounterably. I can also cast Once Upon a Time never, and just play uncounterable turn two Thalia as the way to break the Chancellor triggers. But I think I'm okay losing this card and just doing what I can to make it so that my... Oh, shoot. Alright, so I assume that those were two Chancellor of the Dross. Sorry, chance This one? But it was not two of that one. It was one of these. Uh, so I have played this wrong. <coughs> My opponent's playing this deck, probably. Shoot, I really wish I had looked at that. I just saw, like, Chancellor trigger over here, and I just assumed Reanimator. All right. So the real question here is, do I name Oko or do I just name Chrome Mox? I think I'm going to name Oko. Uh, sure, it could be Hypergenesis. In which case, naming Chrome Mox might be better, but I'm going to name Oko. Straight up Belcher. Like, no, alright, look at the cards, okay. So my opponent is playing Oops All Spells. So what's their kill? Alright, so their kill is Thassa's Oracle off of Dread Return. Yeah, Thassa's Oracle off Dread Return. Okay. Well, let's concede before they see the rest of my hand. <coughs> Alright, um... 
Deafening silence is fine. Rest in peace is fine. Containment priest is fine. Opponent could sideboard in Valtteri types of stuff, I think. So, like, there's worlds where Disenchant matters or Sorcerer Spyglass matters. Sorcerer Spyglass to just help inform my plays might be fine as well. What is, what is my chalice going on? Is chalice even good? I guess chalice goes on zero for petals. Another artifact based mana. Alright, so like I don't want Jitte. <coughs> Revoker can stop. Artifact mana. Uh, yeah, Un Undercity Informer is a good one for Sorcerer Spyglass as well. So, like, these Palace Jailers are not where I need to be. Um, Walking Ballista, also probably not where I need to be. And then after that, like... Eldrazi Displacer, Thalia Heretic, Gathar are awkward. Yeah, so like the question is which of these is better? Eldrazi Displacer lets me blink the Thought Nuts here or the Revoker to reset it, so probably that. And I'm just taking a second to think if there's any mixture. Like any reason for me to have a mixture of them versus like all of one or the other. And I can't think of one. Like there's Cavern of Souls reasons and like having a split might be better and make them more castable. But we're already hoping to have true white for a lot of our plans anyway. I think the game when I'm on the play is going to be pretty easy, but the game when I'm on the draw is going to be really hard. Uh, I think I have to keep this hand. It gets a once upon a time to help sculpt it a little bit better. And I can use... Ah. So much for the sculpting. Alright. First one upon, once upon a time breaks a Chancellor trigger. We don't pay for it. Um, just put that on Eldrazi. Creature type shouldn't matter as long as I have the Mox Diamond. Actually, let's go under City Informer here. Uh, and I'm just going to double check myself that I have the right card. Because like, I mix up Undercity Informer and Blue Strides by all the time. Yes, it is Undercity Informer. Blue Strides by is the 4 mana one. take a Thalia for next turn. That's great. I think that's better than another land. Uh, yes, kind of. Kind of MTG. If I draw a Chalice, it goes on zero for like Chrome Mox and Lotus Petal reasons. Awkward. Technically should have attacked first, but I'm not really expecting removal from my opponent.
Okay. The uh, one when we're on the play is pretty easy. And the one on the draw is way harder. I don't think I get the luxury of making changes to my deck list here. And this time around, I'm just hoping to not die on turn one. Oh, uh, this hand's great. Kind of well. <coughs> Be great on the play. So on the draw, I get Mox Diamond to break a Chancellor trigger. And then I get a Chalice on zero to stop Artifact Mana. But if my opponent's playing smart, they play out Artifact Mana on turn one to play around that. And my opponent has kept seven. <clears throat> So, is this good enough? Turn 1, 3-3 three, three with Chalice on 0. What's better than this? A hand that can cast... a turn 1... Thalia... Deafening Silence and also have a piece of zero mana disruption is better. This hand can turn one Thought Not Seer if I draw one. If I draw Ithalia or Deafening Silence, I can turn one that. The Chalice says my opening play isn't insane here. But if my opponent can't go off turn one and doesn't play off their artifact mana, I probably win. All again, the mind break trap is good advice. We have zero of those in our deck, so we've got pretty good chances of hitting it. I'm going to keep this. I think I have a lot of good top decks if I don't just die. And I think the ability to break Chancellor triggers is pretty important. Uh, it appears our opponent just has the turn one, though, so literally no hand that we had could interact with it. Oh, it's just empty. Okay, we might be able to beat that. Um, so let's plan out how I beat this. I'm not tapping Ancient Tomb and beating it that way, that's for sure. So the first thing I'll do is just cast a Mox Diamond and discard the Ancient Tomb. So like this is going. And the next thing is that I cast the Eldrazi Displacer. So this alone deals with two goblins a turn. <coughs> So this already gives me two colorless mana so that I can double activate Eldrazi Displacer with it. So I'm going to Mox Diamond discard this. Um, actually, I already have White Bite with this. Yeah, so maybe I do discard the Caracas. And then I'll play Chalice on zero. Uh, it's very unlikely that I'll need a third Mox this game. Well, discarding the Caracas was correct, so that's cool. I'm going to need to hit another creature, um, but we're pretty close to having what I need to win. Actually, I might even be winning as of now. I haven't done the math yet. Because I get to double activate starting next turn.
So now I block one, blink two. Yeah, I'm already winning. <coughs> the opponent is going to need to go off again. Well, that's actually a fine draw. That means I can attack. Um, so I do need something off the top of my library at some point to make it so that I can, like, interact with the rest of their combo. Because they have, they have seven cards now. It's pretty likely that they can refuel and do something that matters at some point. Yeah, this Eldrazi Displacer, like, MVP. All right, so we name Undercity Informer here and are pretty darn happy about it. So opponent has Dark Ritual, but not the ability to cast it because there's red mana under Chromox, and that's cool. Um, we can blink all of the things. Good god, we can blink all of the things. All of them. I wonder if opponent will take a warrior's death and die to summoner's pact. Mox Diamond. I have four of a kind. I think four of a kind beats what my opponent has going on. Oh no, they can't even kill themselves with summoner's pact because of chalice. I'm a bully. Ooh. Why don't you blink everything? So that got rid of the other once upon a time. <coughs> the opponent might be able to kill me. Um, it's awkward. They don't have black mana currently. They would need to draw a mox. A wild canter can convert. Okay. I'm not gonna get the opportunity to like blink that and do anything weird. So then that casts dark ritual. Another summoner's pact is going to get Balustrad Spy. Oh no. Oh, does opponent not have Balustrad Spy? They only have Undercity Informer? Oh! Thought I was dead! Oh, oh, oh. Okay, this doesn't do it for everything. Okay, I see. I have not played with Summoner's Pack very much. That was a, 
That was a nail biter. Man, uh, Eldrazi Displacer was worth its weight in gold there. That was uh, a heck of a show. Took, took out eight goblins by itself and did, what, 17 points of damage? No, not 17. That's not divisible by three. 18 points of damage, something like that. Yeah, super, super happy with that one. Um, and I missed this question before. Someone asked uh, who donated for this. I believe it was Kevin B. donated for this one. Yes, Kevin B. In we go. And if you're still here at night in Innistrad Revenue Service, good luck with your assignments. <clears throat> Got some fun things in the queue coming up. I think Thursday is Loam. Yeah, thir Thursday will be either four or five color Loam. Um, I've asked uh, Loamer Boy Connor for a, a list, and he sent me one. And then Saturday is one of our sub goals. Um, I'll be streaming some Delver with uh, Rich Cali. I'm really looking forward to that. He uh, took down the super preliminary and qualified for what is it now? Pro Tour, Players Tour, Mythic, whatever. He he did the thing. Ha ha! We get to play against known storm expert Bryant Cook. Um, I think I'm going to mulligan this hand. I would much rather have a shot at an early Thalia uh, against my opponent here. Not that Thalia. <coughs> Bryant said some kind, encouraging words to me, and uh, then sent me an anecdote about how his opponent took 11 minutes to resolve a doomsday. I'm going to ship this one as well. Ah! Yikes. Yes. No. No. And then the last one's harder. <coughs> I think it's this one. And I think I want a chalice on zero rather than chalice on one against my opponent. Like, one is Brainstorm Ponder, the zero is LED. Or, sorry, also Dark Ritual, Rite of Flame. It's also LED, Petal, Opal, Mox. Now, I'm gonna... I'm gonna go for cutting off the cantrips in case my opponent's hand is weak. Like, that's a, that's a really difficult decision. Opponent's hand doesn't matter too much here. Since I have the Wish Claw Talisman, and my hand doesn't matter too much either. We might just be looking at echo based lines. In which
such case, the wasteland is kind of awkward. I think I'm still going to do it. Um, I think the decision is much closer than it used to be. So it used to be that TES played, and I'm going to fetch Savannah to try to throw my opponent off guard a little bit more. Um, it used to be that it was more correct to always just do it on zero, but now TES is playing more copies of artifact-based mana to make their ad nauseums even better than they used to be, and to make their echoes better. <coughs> All right, um, we're going to get Sorceress Spyglass for Wishclaw Talisman. We're going to get or Orzhov Pontiff for Goblins. We're going to get Deafening Silence for his entire deck. I'll potentially play Disenchant and potentially play Rest in Peace. It's going to depend on how many things I have to board out. Like, I have a lot of cards that I can board in. So, like, Jitte's bad, Ballista's bad, Jailer's bad. Um, Once Upon a Time's medium, Thalia Heretic Cathar is medium. So like these are my 100% and I still need to make a cut here. Uh, all Drazi Displacers are going to go. This leaves me Creature Light at 18. But if I stop my opponent from winning, it doesn't really matter what I kill them with. Uh, this allows me to bring in two Rest in Peace with current build. Or two Disenchant. And those cards are at similar power levels. The Disenchant is good against artifact mana that is played out. And Wishclaw Talisman. I could also just like not play my Once Upon a Times. But the Once Upon a Times are pretty darn good at finding me like Thalia or Thought Knots here to smooth out my opening hands, and even Revoker is fine. I think I'm going to submit like this. I don't know about Rip versus Disenchant. Opponent has one Thought Seize in the sideboard that stops Thalia from hitting play on turn one. I don't know if I'm supposed to keep this hand. I'm going to. I, I don't think I can toss back a turn one Thalia hand basically ever. Turn one brainstorm on the play makes me very afraid. Guza, thank you very much for following. As well as Bizeps is real. I missed you a little bit earlier. I hope you all are enjoying the content. So I don't need to make the Thalia uncounterable. I'm not expecting days or anything crazy like that out of my opponent. I think I'm supposed to play Eldrazi Temple to play towards a Thought Not Seer for next turn. Discard the land that costs me life. And jam a Thalia down my opponent's throat. 
Indeed, we got a turn. Things are looking up. <coughs> I will need more than just Estalia to beat my opponent. My my opponent can play through this eventually. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six mana as of next turn. I don't think I'm going to need the Ancient Tomb mana. But there's world involving Eldrazi Displacer or Palace Jailers later where I do want this extra. I'm going to go ahead and do this. Discard the Cavern of Souls and keep the Ancient Tomb available. Echoing Truth on Thalia or Chain of Vapor or something. Yep. So let's see if opponent can go off here. Opponent can get to five mana, down to four mana. So opponent can take an echo based line here. Yeah. See if opponent can put together a deterministic or non deterministic kill. They don't, I get Chalice plus a very fast clock, but it's uh, starting to look like I'm going to be dead. So this is 5, 6 mana, down to 5. This is going to be an ad nauseum from 0 mana, and opponent has played a land for turn. Uh, opponent does not yet have an initial mana source. Yikes. <laughs> At what point do you stop? Still no initial mana source. <laughs> yep. G G's. <coughs> That was very statistically unlikely. Uh, yeah, I totally agree. All right, folks, we're moving into the last match of the night. We're currently two and two. Pretty happy with our rounds so far. We've stumbled over ourselves a little bit, which is to be expected. Um, but we've done some powerful things. Ugh. Reluctant keep here. I really need a soul land to make this hand pop. Hey, that's a that's a soul land. This is how you get good at magic, folks. You just need to ask your deck for whatever card you need. I should have thought a little bit longer about playing a Chalice on Zero there as well, since my opponent led on Polluted Delta. Mm, JK, opponent's probably like Stone Blade with that land combination. <coughs> Stoneforge Mystic here is so good against me. Unless I wrap another soul land off the top so that I can thought not away the equipment. Oh, meddling mage. Yeah, sure. Let's see what they name. Yeah, that's a fine name. My hand's pretty awkward.
Okay, that's good. We have a target for that. So my draw has lined up poorly with what my opponent's doing. They're probably just going to get a Palace Jailer, and when they eventually resolve that, I'm going to lose the game. Now if they're going for Flicker Wisp. This is super awkward. So if they don't have another land, then wastelanding them off the scrub land is like so, so, so good. But if they do have the land, it's so much better to just like play the Reality Smasher and start trying to clock them before they get stupid crap like Soul Herder going. It is a really tough decision here. Um, I'm going to wasteland my opponent and then take the attack in. Actually, no. If I take the attack in, I take three back and I have Ancient Tomb. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to chill. Alright, so there's a, there's a reason why I hate this Esper Vile deck so much, and it's that its mana base is absolutely atrocious. And we're seeing the deck lose to itself here. Um, now that I have the faster clock, I think I will go ahead and attack with the Thalia. So, opponent doesn't have a fourth land right now. Alright, sure. That's an annoyance. Also an annoyance is that I need one more mana to cast this chalice on x equals three. I think is what I want to be doing. I just want to like stop Flicker with Soul Herder and those sorts of things from hitting play. Yes. It's weird though, because while the Peacekeeper is around, my opponent is more likely to cast two drops than three drops. But I think the three drops are going to be what beats me. Two, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, this will this will let me cast Chalice on X equals three. So I don't need to bounce my own Thalia here. Ha! That's not going to do what I want. But I might want that in play. For later.
<clears throat> so I guess I want to look at my deck list for a second. I don't have that many 3-drops. I don't have that many 2-drops. I don't really care about any of these things being shut off. Like, I just want to draw Palace Jailer or Walking Ballista, remove the Peacekeeper, and win the game. Uh, Priest is in the sideboard. I can't cast off Nazir due to Meddling Mage. I think I need to cast that this turn. <coughs> And then next turn, I'll Chalice on X equals 3. Oh, no worries. Now we get once upon a time to dig for a ballista or jailer. We have five, eight, nine, ten damage showing. So we're not lethal yet, but we're getting there. Uh, I believe I have played Peacekeeper in the sideboard before. Yuck. Uh, don't want this stuff. I mean, I'm glad that I got through it using Once Upon a Time, but this is really not where I want to be. Sure. Nice. Creatures can't attack while this is in play. If I flicker this, it just comes back instantly. This exiles it, then returns it. Ripple Jeep, I've, I, I've seen that comment. I'm just focusing on other things right now, sorry. I, I definitely think the Soldier Stompy-esque decks have legs and are underexplored. I'm just sort of like in the background trying to figure out like what sort of things are going to end up beating me this game and how do I play around them. So I don't want to play my Thalia into my own chalice there, uh, so I caught myself on that. So I don't think I need to play this city this turn, I'll just pass the turn. If I draw another chalice, it's kind of interesting. I do think I put it on two. I'm 
No, we have three Palace Jailer, one Walking Ballista. Our wastelands are also like incredibly good. Yeah, I'll cast that. Does this cost five mana? I'm gonna go ahead and play this city. So I can leave up my Caracas. No, I'm perfectly happy with meddling mage on Thought Knots here. Thought Knots here doesn't really do much right now. Uh, the fourth chalice will not go on four because Palace Jailer is how we win this game. There it is. Uh, so if opponent doesn't have Force of Will, uh, we basically win the game on the spot, either literally or figuratively. Alright, that's fine. We'll draw another. Uh, Legacy's really boring. The Esper Vile deck is staying alive due to a Peacekeeper. I don't know that they can actually win the game anymore. What does that even name? I have, I have, like, everything in their deck covered. Like, they can't resolve any of their stuff. That has activated abilities. Oh yeah, I forgot about the Chalice. It, it, it just, like, does not matter. Eh. I'll wait until I can do that uncounterably. Yeah, and it may be that I just, like, wait for Jailer plus Cavern. Like, I won't play the next Cavern that I get, I don't think. This is the most boring game of Magic I think I've ever played. That's annoying. Um, 
don't think I want to respond to that. I think opponent doesn't really get to ever lose their peacekeeper. So it may be that Palace Jailer is just going to like mill them to their death faster. No, I've, I've played Stasis before on stream. We lost our matches very quickly, so it didn't matter. No, I played Miracles plenty. Owned the deck in paper. Uh, the first open that I cashed was actually with Miracles, not with Death and Taxes. Yeah, like, I have to stay focused on this game because there's a decent amount going on, but, like, I have no decisions that I can make. I just have to make sure I'm not missing anything. The opponent's going to lose by self-mill in all likelihood. Okay, um, there's a cavern. I'm just going to hold that until I get Ballista or Jailer. Well, if it wasn't for the Peacekeeper, my opponent would be dead. Where is it? The Chalices. Chalice has done nothing wrong, ever. Not even once. So I have 15 power in play. So I still do have lethal once I find Jailer or Ballista. A hey, Venser. Okay. Venser Caracas is admittedly pretty annoying. That was perhaps the worst thing you could have done, opponent. I am now going to get to Once Upon a Time and dig for... Ah, I see. Alright, that's pretty good in combination. So now I have to discard a bunch of cards. So I don't want this. <clears throat> don't want this. I don't want this.
The Soul Herder resolving is annoying. The Flicker Wisp is annoying. So now opponent could get to the point where they just get to just kill me in the air before I find an out. This is going to be a nuisance. I'll still beat them via walking ballista if I can find that. Well, we're doing a real bad job of finding cards that matter. So shame on us. This opponent is... Not going to like this Eldrazi Displacer, but I don't think I can make it uncounterable. I think I have to expose it to a Force of Will. How many cards can I make my opponent draw? Play Cavern of Souls, no, play Eldrazi Temple, cast it for these two. I have 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 mana. So that's four activations. I can make them draw eight cards. Uh, my plan might just be Eldrazi Displacer Mill. Now that they have Venser. <coughs> I think I'm going to start with this and then make my decision from here based on whether or not this gets force willed. Alright, it does get force willed. Awkward, but fine. So now I need to not die to board. Take four in the air, and then I can block a handful of creatures on the ground. She'll play Thalia first this turn. Although if I if I play Thalia first, I don't really play towards actually winning via mill. It's called Esper Vile. Uh, yeah, bad is also a correct name for it. Um, but I'm not going to just sit here and bash this deck all day. Because it will hurt the one pilot's feelings. We really bottomed out this game, um, which is super unfortunate. We had so many turns to dig into an answer, but opponents, um, two four drops in their deck, uh, got them out of this. Yes, this is indeed the deck that I'm not allowed to make fun of anymore. Not because it's good, though. <laughs>
JTL is very sensitive and cannot take criticism of his deck. He can't disconnect criticism of a deck versus criticism of himself. So, there's that. Alright, um, so what do we want versus this deck? Slash, what do I not want? So, generally speaking, I don't think Chalice of the Void is particularly good against this deck. The only reasons why our Chalices were, like, even playable last game was because my opponent happened to have access to Peacekeeper. And the Peacekeeper drug the game on very, very, very long. So that's the only reason why my chalices were good at all. I think my Thalias are pretty medium. My Revokers are good for Aether Vile, but otherwise don't do much. But being good against Vile is very nice because the Esper Vile mana base is god-awful. So, as we saw early in that game, we wastelanded them once and they stumbled around forever. Um, I just couldn't capitalize on it due to Peacekeeper. And it's very hard for them to cast all of their color spells on curve. I think I'm going to make myself a little softer to... Yeah, wait, wait until they cast Tithe. Or their sideboarded Emrakul. I think I'm going to make my opening hands a little bit worse to make my mid-game a bit better. I can consider the Orzhov Pontiffs, but the Orzhov Pontiffs are really only good if I get Eldrazi Displacer as well. Uh, this is going to be fine. I think the deck could be good at some point, but I think its mana base is god-awful and that it stumbles over itself way too much. I just think the deck... I think the deck does nothing unless the deck gets to do exactly what it wants to do. And I think that's that's a huge problem. Like, the, the games where you get to go super long and you get to set up, like, the Soul Herder stuff are super, super cool. But... I think it's just too easy to trip over yourself and die, or not have time to set up what you want to be doing against a lot of decks. So 
This is awkward for me, but still okay. The Containment Priest is fine. Like, the Containment Priest will prevent some of the more ridiculous shenanigans from going down that involve the Soul Herder. On a top top there. I think for Teferi reasons, I'm not supposed to play out this Karak, or sorry, I'm not supposed to play out Mox Diamond on Caracas. Like, if I were to lose both of those mana sources to bouncing shenanigans, I probably wouldn't win this game. One hundred percent just jamming here. The opponent has two cards, they've already two for one themselves twice in sorts of plowshares and discarding. So if their last two cards are like force force, like so be it. I am going to attack here. Brazen Borrower could be something that my opponent could have. The weird mono black decks are way better than I expected them to be. Not great, opponent has their own Jailer. Well, isn't this just going to be super awkward? Uh, did an opponent just, like, super fuck up there? Aren't you supposed to take my Containment Priest, then you get to get your Charming Prince back, blink your Palace Jailer? Yeah. <coughs> Um, do I attack? I think I attack and trade for Palace Jailer, and then play my Thalia Heretic Cathar, which will make whatever creature they play entered on tap so I can take the Monarch back. That makes sense to me. Wow. Unexpected value. I'm super, super surprised about no trade there. The opponent just have another Palace Jailer in hand. Oh, they have a Flicker Wisp, I see. Well, ain't life weird. I should have blinked that, I just wasn't paying attention. I 
testing opponent supposed to name reality smasher here? Eldrazi Displacer is a good name as well. Oh yeah, it's super bad. I was thinking about like my own Palace Jailer based lines. Smash? Seems like just Smash. Yeah. Like, present lethal, force the trade for Containment Priest for Meddling Mage. Still have Eldrazi, just still have Reality Smasher around, then have Palace Jailer for if they Peacekeeper the following turn. Um, I'm not going to play towards having Swords of Plowshares up post Monarch Trigger. Uh, it's a super fringe occurrence. All right. So this gets Peacekeeper. I exile Peacekeeper, smash in. My opponent trades with me and goes to one with no creatures left in play, and I'm the Monarch. Oh, no, Soul Herder. Soul Herder is pretty good. Kind of. There hasn't been a lot of talk of Hogak deaths in a long time. So now I'm going to get to take their board. I become the Monarch, I get my Reality Smasher back, and I get to crash in. Oh, and it's uncounterable. That's even better. <coughs> um, let me just figure out how I do this. So if I take the Soul Herder, I take three bodies and my opponent goes to one. Um, there's no way that I can do this where the Reality Smasher lives. So it's probably better to just like make sure the pal their Palace Jailer dies so that they can't blink it again somehow. Let's do this. The opponent has four toughness. They have to block everything on Smasher or they're dead. So I still get to sneak one damage through here.
Put my opponent to one. Be the monarch. Opponent has already used a palace jailer. They do have one more palace jailer left in their deck. I have another reality smasher, which is super hot. You're still dead to that. Brazen Borrower can't block this. Um, I believe opponent had showed us another Jailer previously. I mean, I don't really care if I time out. Like, I, I do not care if I time out while streaming. It does not bother me at all. I would rather, like, play my games well and engage with chat than, like, try to always make sure I get all my games in. Like, I basically will never time out when I'm just playing by myself. But if I sit here and spend two minutes to explain a really cool line and go into details about like what beats me and how I need to wiggle through these positions, um, it's totally weird. Um, this hand's fine. It's not impressive by any means, but I think I'm just going to go ahead and keep it. So the actual awkward thing about that is that I don't have colorless for my various Eldrazi now. This eliminates some of my outs to Peacekeeper, but it means that my opponent can't top deck an Aether Vial and like really pull ahead in terms of like their mana. Yeah, that's a that's a win for me. That's gonna name Eldrazi, and then I think I'm just gonna play Thalia Heretic to Thar this turn. It's counterable, but I don't really care if it gets countered. And, like, that's very clear to my opponent, since I played the Cavern of Souls that way. And because I changed my mind, I should have played Savannah, so that this doesn't get wastelanded, but, you know, whatever. We are in uh, F6 value time territory. Let's see if my opponent notices that this is counterable. The whole goal is to make these uncounterable. Like, I knew the Thought Knots here wouldn't be. I was just going to bounce one of my lands. Oh no, they're just going to bounce the spell, I see. That's fine. Wasn't sure how they were going to respond to that one. Plague Engineer on Eldrazi is pretty decent here. Oh, Plague Engineer on Human. Um, that's fine too. I 
I think I'm going to go ahead and take a turn to do this. I don't want them to set up like Soul Herder Venser or anything. So, in my next turn cycle, I'm going to get Uncounterable Eldrazi Displacer, Uncounterable Containment Priest, and then I'm going to get to blink at least one creature a turn out of existence. That's a rough draw. No, it's not. Holy shit. Oh, God. Oh, man. Uh, that's a sack of crap. That's a very good draw. That's super suspicious. Like, this is on human, so, like, that still trades with Containment Priest in combat. I still probably just get aggroed out before I can stabilize, um, but it'll be pretty close. Yeah, I cannot catch a break this game. Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine. So I can like technically stay alive and go to one by blocking an X2. Um, I don't think I have outs here. How can I beat my opponent? How can I block six different creatures? Is it hundred-handed one that can block up to six additional creatures? So if like that's on the top of my library, it works out. We'll see if it's on top of my library. Uh, I thought I heard So I can play one creature and then die to combat damage. GG's. I made some misplays, opponent made some misplays. It is what it is. Uh, okay, closing thoughts on this deck list. Eh, I'm not particularly impressed. And that's often how I feel about White Eldrazi. The, the clunkiness of the lands here um, was very noticeable uh, across the course of the league. And that feeds in a lot of different directions. So, like, you have five mana sources in your deck 
Well, okay. So Savannah, Mox Diamond, and the two Windswept Heaths cast once upon a time if it's not in your opening hand. <coughs> so you have three cards that are dead-ish draws in the like mid to late game. Like in the very, very late game, these become live again. But in the mid game, and like we might be talking turns maybe like two through six, this is often going to be a dead draw, so I don't particularly like it. The ability to have extra hate creatures that comes down on turn one when you have these Mox Diamond draws is kind of nice. But our Thought Not Seers often didn't get deployed on curve or ahead of curve, which was a really big deal over the course of this league. So like against Esper Humans in the last round there, we didn't have the ability to Thought Not Seer before they meddling maged, um, and our Thought Not Seers got stuck in our hand all game, and there were a couple other instances where I had something like Palace Jailer and I couldn't cast it, or I had to make some tricky Cavern of Souls based decisions. And I think basically no matter how you build this mana base, the mana base of this deck is bad. So you can do things like put Brushland into the deck at the cost of Caracas, and then you lose out a little bit to the the combo base decks, or you lose the ability to like block and bounce your multiple Thalias. And there are also times where we don't have enough lands for our Mox Diamonds. Uh, there were a couple absurd hands where we had like three or four mox diamonds and like we just couldn't cast them and that's that's like always going to be the case if you have that many of them. Um, I like I think the land count of twenty five is okay to enable mox diamond, but other versions of this deck have tried chrome mox where you instead try to pitch some of these white creatures instead and that runs into the problem of like that doesn't work with all these colorless cards that you're playing. So despite the fact that this is like a quote unquote monocolored deck, the the mana is surprisingly bad. And I also don't love how heavily white symbol based the sideboard is when you're playing a whole bunch of cavernous souls. And the Orzhov Pontiffs, I think, are really hard to cast. Um, I boarded them in versus TDS, and like they were fine as Goblin Insurance. And I don't remember if I boarded them in against Oops All Spells as Goblin Insurance, but I didn't. That's something that I should have been thinking about. Eldrazi Displacer did a lot of work over the course of this league. Didn't get the chance to like, do some of the traditional things that we might have seen with it, like Eldrazi Displacer thought not here to just continuously rip through my opponent's hand and make it so that it can't build up a hand, but it did really great work in holding down the fort. <coughs> so, I don't necessarily think that White Eldrazi is anywhere close to a tier one deck right now. I, th I think it's a fine option, and like, there's times, especially when like decks are really combo, sorry, when metagames are really combo heavy, that trying out this sort of deck can be fine. But I think Palace Jailer is at a really awkward point in this metagame, um, and this is something I was talking about with a number of people in the DNT Discord and on Twitter as well, where because so many decks are playing things like Ice Fang, Kawaddle, um, and Oko, that actually makes it pretty hard to hold the Monarch. I, I don't know how great this card is right now. Um, and I've been trimming or removing this card from DNT decklist that I've been playing. So, like, that should be very telling because Palace Jailer a few months ago used to be like one of the best cards in Death and Taxes and one of the best ways to like take over control matchups and that's just not true anymore. Yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed the content. Take it easy. So, if I were to play this deck again, I would keep experimenting with the mana a little bit more. I don't know that Once Upon a Time actually made this deck better. It did some cool things versus the Chancellor of the Annex. And between like Mox Diamond and Once Upon a Time, we were able to break Chancellor triggers pretty easily. But that's about all it did. And a couple of times that we 
cast it, we just like whipped with it despite the fact that we looked at a bunch of cards. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of lukewarm on this. Like, I wouldn't register this for a preliminary or a super preliminary or, or anything like that. If I was going to, like, play something that had Eldrazi in it, I would just play either Eldrazi Post or traditional Eldrazi Aggro. Oh, but it was an enjoyable stream. A uh, lot of very interesting things uh, happening there. So, folks, I hope you have enjoyed today. Um, if you do, please consider following or subscribing or things of that nature if you aren't already. Uh, thank you to Guza and Bromeo Bromeo for following as well. I missed you in the sort of last match there. Um, have a great rest of the day. I'm going to go ahead and turn you over to... Uh, let's head over to Goblin Lackey's channel for a little raid action. I will be back on Thursday with... What am I playing Thursday? I, know I looked it up earlier today, but I already forgot. Uh, with Loam. Cheers, folks. Have a great rest of the day.